Alexandra of Denmark, Alexandra Caroline Marie Charlotte Louise Julia. December 1, 1844, November 20, 1925, was Queen of the United Kingdom and the British Dominions, and Empress of India, from January 22, 1901 to May 6, 1910 as the wife of King Emperor Edward VII. Alexandra's family had been relatively obscure until 1852, when her father, Prince Christian of Schleswig-Holstein-Zonderberg-Glücksburg, was chosen with the consent of the major European powers to succeed his second cousin Frederick VII as King of Denmark. At the age of 16 Alexandra was chosen as the future wife of Albert Edward, Prince of Wales, the son and heir apparent of Queen Victoria. The couple married 18 months later in 1863, the year in which her father became King of Denmark as Christian IX and her brother was appointed King of Greece as George I. Alexandra was Princess of Wales from 1863 to 1901, the longest anyone has ever held that title, and became generally popular. Her style of dress and bearing were copied by fashion-conscious women. Largely excluded from wielding any political power, she unsuccessfully attempted to sway the opinion of British ministers and her husband's family to favor Greek and Danish interests. Her public duties were restricted to uncontroversial involvement in charitable work. On the death of Queen Victoria in 1901, Albert Edward became King Emperor as Edward VII, with Alexandra as Queen Empress. She held the status until Edward's death in 1910, at which point their son George V ascended the throne. Alexandra died aged 80 in 1925. Princess Alexandra Caroline Marie Charlotte Louise Julia, or Alex, as her immediate family knew her, was born at the Yellow Palace, an 18th-century townhouse at 18 Amaliegade, immediately adjacent to the Amalienborg Palace complex in Copenhagen. Her father was Prince Christian of Schleswig-Holstein-Zunderberg-Glücksburg and her mother was Princess Louise of Hesse Castle. She had five siblings, Frederick, George, Dagmar, later Empress of Russia, Thyra and Valdemar. Her father's family was a distant cadet branch of the Danish royal house of Oldenburg, which was descended from King Christian III. Although they were of royal blood, the family lived a comparatively modest life. They did not possess great wealth, her father's income from an army commission was about £800 per year and their house was a rent-free grace and favor property. Occasionally, Hans Christian Andersen was invited to call and tell the children stories before bedtime. In 1848, Christian VIII of Denmark died and his only son Frederick ascended the throne. Frederick was childless, had been through two unsuccessful marriages, and was assumed to be infertile. A succession crisis arose because Frederick ruled in both Denmark and Schleswig-Holstein, and the succession rules of each territory differed. In Holstein, the Salic law prevented inheritance through the female line, whereas no such restrictions applied in Denmark. Holstein, being predominantly German, proclaimed independence and called in the aid of Prussia. In 1852, the major European powers called a conference in London to discuss the Danish succession. An uneasy peace was agreed, which included the provision that Prince Christian of schleswig holstein zonderberg glücksburg would be Frederick's heir in all his dominions and the prior claims of others, who included Christian's own mother-in-law, brother-in-law and wife, were surrendered. Prince Christian was given the title Prince of Denmark and his family moved into a new official residence, Bernstorff Palace. Although the family status had risen, there was little or no increase in their income, and they did not participate in court life at Copenhagen, for they refused to meet Frederick's third wife and former mistress, Louise Rasmussen, because she had an illegitimate child by a previous lover. Alexandra shared a drafty attic bedroom with her sister, Dagmar, made her own clothes, and waited at table along with her sisters. Alexandra and Dagmar were given swimming lessons by the Swedish pioneer of women's swimming, Nancy Edberg. At Bernstorff, Alexandra grew into a young woman, she was taught English by the English chaplain at Copenhagen and was confirmed in Krestensboa Palace. She was devout throughout her life, and followed high church practice. With the death of her mother-in-law, Queen Victoria, in 1901, Alexandra became Queen Empress as consort to the new king. 
Just two months later, her son George and daughter-in-law Mary left on an extensive tour of the empire, leaving their young children in the care of Alexandra and Edward, who doted on their grandchildren. On George's return, preparations for Edward and Alexandra's coronation in Westminster Abbey were well in hand but just a few days before the scheduled coronation in June 1902 the king became seriously ill with appendicitis. Alexandra deputized for him at a military parade, and attended the royal ascot races without him, in an attempt to prevent public alarm. Eventually, the coronation had to be postponed and Edward had an operation performed by Frederick Treves of the London Hospital to drain the infected appendix. After his recovery, Alexandra and Edward were crowned together in August, the King by the Archbishop of Canterbury, Frederick Temple, and the Queen by the Archbishop of York, William Dalrymple MacLagan. Despite being Queen, Alexandra's duties changed little, and she kept many of the same retainers. Alexandra's woman of the bedchamber, Charlotte Knollis, the daughter of Sir William Knollis, served Alexandra loyally for many years. On December 10, 1903, Knollis woke to find her bedroom full of smoke. She roused Alexandra and shepherded her to safety. In the words of Grand Duchess Augusta of mecklenburg strelitz we must give credit to old Charlotte for really saving, Alexandra's, life. Alexandra again looked after her grandchildren when George and Mary went on a second tour, this time to British India, over the winter of 1905-06. Her father, Christian IX of Denmark, died that January. Eager to retain their family links, both to each other and to Denmark, in 1907 Alexandra and her sister, the Dowager Empress of Russia, purchased a villa north of Copenhagen, Hodor, as a private getaway. Alexandra was denied access to the king's briefing papers and excluded from some of his foreign tours to prevent her meddling in diplomatic matters. She was deeply distrustful of Germans, particularly her nephew German Emperor Wilhelm II, and invariably opposed anything that favored German expansion or interests. For example, in 1890 Alexandra wrote a memorandum, distributed to senior British ministers and military personnel, warning against the planned exchange of the British North Sea Island of Heligoland for the German colony of Zanzibar, pointing out Heligoland's strategic significance and that it could be used either by Germany to launch an attack, or by Britain to contain German aggression. Despite this, the exchange went ahead, the Germans fortified the island and, in the words of Robert Inser and as Alexandra had predicted, it became the keystone of Germany's maritime position for offense as well as for defense. The Frankfurter Zeitung was outspoken in its condemnation of Alexandra and her sister, the Dowager Empress, saying that the pair were the center of the international anti-German conspiracy. She despised and distrusted German Emperor Wilhelm II, who was her husband's nephew, calling him in 1900 inwardly our enemy. In 1910, Alexandra became the first queen consort to visit the British House of Commons during a debate. In a remarkable departure from precedent, for two hours she sat in the ladies' gallery overlooking the chamber while the Parliament bill, to remove the right of the House of Lords to veto legislation, was debated. Privately, Alexandra disagreed with the bill. Shortly afterwards, she left to visit her brother, George I of Greece, in Corfu. While there, she received news that King Edward was seriously ill. Alexandra returned at once and arrived only the day before her husband died. In his last hours, she personally administered oxygen from a gas cylinder to help him breathe. She told Frederick Ponsonby, I feel as if I had been turned into stone, unable to cry, unable to grasp the meaning of it all. Later that year she moved out of Buckingham Palace to Marlborough House, but she retained possession of Sandringham. The new king, Alexandra's son George V, soon faced a decision over the Parliament bill. Despite her personal views, Alexandra supported her son's reluctant agreement to Prime Minister H. H. Asquith's request to create sufficient liberal peers after a general election if the Lords continued to block the legislation. From Edward's death, Alexandra was Queen Mother, being a Dowager Queen and the mother of the reigning monarch. 
she did not attend the coronation of her son and daughter-in-law in 1911 since it was not customary for a crowned queen to attend the coronation of another king or queen, but otherwise continued the public side of her life, devoting time to her charitable causes. One such cause was Alexandra Rose Day, where artificial roses made by people with disabilities were sold in aid of hospitals by women volunteers. During the First World War the custom of hanging the banners of foreign princes invested with Britain's highest order of knighthood, the Order of the Garter, in St. George's Chapel, Windsor Castle, came under criticism, as the German members of the order were fighting against Britain. Alexandra joined calls to have down those hateful German banners. Driven by public opinion, but against his own wishes, the king had the banners removed, but to Alexandra's dismay he had taken down not only those vile Prussian banners but also those of her Hessian relations who were, in her opinion, simply soldiers or vassals under that brutal German emperor's orders. On September 17, 1916, she was at Sandringham during a Zeppelin air raid, but far worse was to befall other members of her family. In Russia, her nephew Tsar Nicholas II was overthrown and he, his wife and their children were killed by revolutionaries. Alexandra's sister, the Dowager Empress, was rescued from Russia in 1919 by HMS Marlborough and brought to England, where she lived for some time with Alexandra. Alexandra retained a youthful appearance into her senior years, but during the war her age caught up with her. She took to wearing elaborate veils and heavy makeup, which was described by gossips as having her face enameled. She made no more trips abroad, and her health worsened. In 1920, a blood vessel in her eye burst, leaving her with temporary partial blindness. Towards the end of her life, her memory and speech became impaired. She died on November 20, 1925 at Sandringham House from a heart attack 11 days before her 81st birthday, lay in state at Westminster Abbey, and was buried in an elaborate tomb next to her husband in St. George's Chapel, Windsor Castle. The Queen Alexandra Memorial by Alfred Gilbert was unveiled on Alexandra Rose Day June 8, 1932 at Marlborough Gate, London. An ode in her memory, so many true princesses who have gone, composed by the then Master of the King's Music Sir Edward Elgar to words by the Poet Laureate John Macefield, was sung at the unveiling and conducted by the composer. Alexandra was highly popular with the British public. After she married the Prince of Wales in 1863, a new park in People's Palace, a public exhibition and art centre under construction in North London, were renamed the Alexandra Palace and Park to commemorate her. There are at least 67 roads and streets in the Greater London area alone called Alexandra Road, Alexandra Avenue, Alexandra Gardens, Alexandra Close or Alexandra Street, all named after her. Queen Alexandra Bridge in Sunderland was inaugurated in 1909. Unlike her husband and mother-in-law, she was not castigated by the press. Funds that she helped to collect were used to buy a river launch, called Alexandra, to ferry the wounded during the Sudan campaign, and to fit out a hospital ship, named the Princess of Wales, to bring back wounded from the Boer War. During the Boer War, Queen Alexandra's Imperial Military Nursing Service, later renamed Queen Alexandra's Royal Army Nursing Corps, was founded under royal warrant. Alexandra had little understanding of money. The management of her finances was left in the hands of her loyal comptroller, Sir Dighton Probyn V.C., who undertook a similar role for her husband. In the words of her grandson, Edward VIII, later the Duke of Windsor, her generosity was a source of embarrassment to her financial advisors. Whenever she received a letter soliciting money, a check would be sent by the next post, regardless of the authenticity of the mendicant and without having the case investigated. Though she was not always extravagant, she had her old stockings darned for reuse and her old dresses were recycled as furniture covers. She would dismiss protests about her heavy spending with a wave of a hand or by claiming that she had not heard. She had a small scar on her neck, which was probably the result of a childhood operation, by wearing choker necklaces and high necklines, setting fashions which were adopted for fifty years. Alexandra's effect on fashion was so profound that society ladies even copied her limping gait, 
after her serious illness in 1867 left her with a stiff leg. This came to be known as the Alexandra Limp. She used predominantly the London fashion houses, her favorite was Redfern's, but she shopped occasionally at Doucet and Fromont of Paris. Alexandra has been portrayed on television by Deborah Grant and Helen Ryan in Edward VII, and Furbank in Lily, Maggie Smith in All the King's Men, and B.B. Anderson in The Lost Prince. She was portrayed in film by Helen Ryan again in the 1980 film The Elephant Man, Sarah Stewart in the 1997 film Mrs. Brown, and Julia Blake in the 1999 film Passion. In a 1980 stage play by Royce Ridden, Mother Dear, she was portrayed by Margaret Lockwood in her last acting role. Thanks for watching Herdery Channel. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe our channel.